Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the shop. My name's Adam. Another episode of SNS here. I believe this one's going to be 34. Kicking right on along. So we've had a nice week and I've shared, uh, I've already shared quite a few videos for you this week. We've had a lot of great comments. Everybody's really seemed to be enjoying it. You know, we had the motor shaft project there that I threw up and had a little bit more metalizing. And I uh, really enjoyed seeing all the comments from everybody, guys. I really appreciate it. And then uh, we've already shown the uh, moving and leveling of the Monarch lathe. So uh, I wanted to throw that up there so that whenever I film this episode, that <laughs> the background is uh, wouldn't be wondering, what, hey, what's going on over there? You made some changes. So, yeah, we finally got the Monarch moved and, and leveled up. And I haven't used the Monarch since we've done that yet. I've had a few guys ask me if I'm going to be doing some test cuts. So yes, I do plan on finding a piece of stock that I can get trued up in the in the forge jaw and make some test cuts and see how it's doing. And uh, possibly may have to do some fine tuning on it, like uh, Tom had showed. So uh, we'll we'll get to that and and uh, we'll show that in another video there. So. Uh, I think I've got quite a bit of uh, fun content for this week that uh, I'm going to uh, play on this video here. I've got a little notepad here so I can uh, kind of go over. So we've got some viewer mail that come in this week. We've got two different packages, and uh, I'll show you that. We'll, we'll get to that. Some, some really nice stuff. Uh, one of the packages was the one that I was expecting last weekend, and I finally got that. And uh, so we'll show that. We got another really cool package that showed up and I can't wait to show it to you. Um, I've got a really quick clip that I took with my phone at work. It was kind of like a, one of these little tips that uh, somebody had uh, mentioned to me that I never tried before. So uh, it, there was a job at work where I could use that tip. So I, so I tried it out. So I'm gonna throw that in there and uh, I've got a I've got a little bit of a flea market find, not much. It's a quick little video. Uh, I've also got some new tooling, some stuff that I got off eBay. So we'll check that out. And uh, as far as a, a project this week, I've actually got some aluminum welding that I've done. I haven't shown any aluminum TIG welding in any of my videos yet, and uh, I think I got a couple guys that were wondering if I could weld aluminum, <laughs> but. Uh, Yes, I can weld aluminum. So we uh, had that little project, so we got that on video. I'm going to throw that in there, and you can check that out. Uh, we've also got, I've got another slideshow to, to uh, show you this week, but it's going to be a little bit different than it normally is. And once we get through this and you see what we got, you'll understand why. And uh, it's, I think you guys are going to enjoy it. So uh, give me some feedback and let me know how, how you think it turns out. And uh, if I have time in this video, I've got some items around here that I'm going to show you that uh, I have no interest in anymore. And it might be some items that I'll consider trading for something. And uh, so, like I said, if I got some time in that, we're going to throw that in there. If, I don't, if you don't see it in this video, we might throw it in another one by itself. Just some stuff that I don't need anymore and, and that I would be willing to trade off to somebody else that could use it and maybe in return for something else, you know. So anyway, that's uh, that's gonna be the content for this video. And I uh, hope you guys enjoy it. Don't forget to uh, click that thumbs up. Give me a like if you like what you see. And uh, drop me a comment. I always love hearing from everybody. And uh, thank you for all the new subscribers. They're, uh, they're constantly coming in. I'm, I'm getting those updates every day. A lot of new subscribers. So uh, thanks guys for uh, tuning into the channel. I appreciate it. All right, so let's go ahead and get some content, okay? Well, today I finally got my viewer appreciation mail. The uh, mailman finally decided to leave my package that I was waiting on. Uh, so <laughs> today's actually Saturday, and I talked about this in the uh, SNS 33, which I've been reading everybody's comments. <laughs> We've been having a lot of fun with that. A lot of funny comments out there. So. Anyway, we finally got our uh, parcel. You guys were cracking jokes on me for saying package. So this is it. And this comes to us from Dwayne Lindsay. 
And, uh, you know, I didn't even check to, uh, to ask where Dwayne's from. I think he's from the, the East Coast. He said he was on vacation uh, in the Atlantic Ocean whenever he emailed me about the box not getting dropped off. But this actually comes from Amazon. The, uh, the last video, SNS32, I talked a little bit about using a mic and, or not having a mic. And we had a few guys mention some good quality mics to pick up out there. And so Dwayne actually sent me an email and said, hey, uh, I'd like to send you a mic as a, as a, a viewer appreciation gift. I said, you yeah, know, I'd be my guest, man. I'd love to have one. So that's what he did. He, he picked one up, and he I think he knows a lot more about him than I do. So let's check it out. And I haven't opened this up, but I opened the box up. And he even had them wrap this thing like a, like a Christmas present here. And you got your uh, Amazon smile there. Let's see. This is just the uh, pack and slip, I believe, here. Gift from Dwayne Lindsay. Okay, he says this one is a step up from the ice version. Comes in colors and hot pink tempted. Comes in colors and hot pink tempted me just so Atlanta would get a laugh each time you needed to use it. But relented, and so it is brushed aluminum finished just for you. <laughs> Enjoy from Dwayne. <laughs> All right, Dwayne. Well, let's check it out. Okay, it's just an empty box here, and uh, there's another thing here. This is the same thing that was on this paper here. So he was going to get the hot pink version, but he opted to get the brushed aluminum. So, should I just rip into this thing? I would like to save this if I could with his uh, note here. Okay. Ribbon. Man, I feel like it's Christmas time. The snowball. Blue snowball. Classic studio ball USB microphone. It looks different than I expected, I tell you that. Okay, well, let's uh Let's go ahead and open this thing up. Check it out, man. This is pretty cool. Brand new. Box in a box. Okay, so here's the Snowball user guide. There it is inside there. It's definitely a ball, isn't it? Wow. I was picturing a regular, you know, just a regular style mic like you like you see musicians use, but I don't I don't know much about audio. That's pretty cool. It says it's brushed aluminum. It's got a really high polish to it. I'm already getting my fingerprints on it. So let's get the stand out of here. It's cool. They got the little finger tabs so you can pull these things out. Maybe not. I just ripped it off. Okay, don't want to come out. <coughs> All right, there's the USB cable. Stand, and that's it. Okay.
nice quality to it, man. But those, those things are spring loaded. Look at that. All right, so get the feet pulled out there. Okay. Get it threaded on there. There it is. Let's get the emblem face the front there. Okay. Well, I got to say, uh, Dwayne, thank you very much, man. This is a very cool gift. It, it looks very expensive to me. <laughs> I had no idea what, what this thing cost and what you paid for it. Uh, a couple of guys had sent me the links to these things and uh, they said you could find them on Amazon around 50 or 60 bucks, but I think you had said this is a little bit of an upgraded version here. So we will... We will play with this. Uh, I'll play with it and, and see if I can get this to work. I'll hook it in and make some test videos. And I've got to uh, pull up my, my uh, power director software and, and figure out how to do the, uh, the, the voiceover. There's a, I know there's a thing in there called a capture where you can uh, do audio or um, use like a webcam or something. So I've never played with it before, but I will now and see if I can figure out how to how to use this and uh, hey <clears throat> uh, I'll, I'll even see if I can figure out how to use this whenever I'm sitting here doing the videos too maybe we can make use of it that way also so okay well there's you there's you a little closer shot of it and I'll I'll go through the book and and read and read the instructions on this thing you've got a switch here on the back that says one two and three I'll have to figure out what that's for. Very nice, man. Very cool. Very cool gift. And uh, I, I appreciate all you guys uh, suggesting this. You know, this is another way that's going to help my help my videos, hopefully. And, and we can continue to improve on what we do here and, and make you a more quality video to watch. So, uh, again, thanks, Dwayne. Thank you very much for the gift. I really, really appreciate it. And I uh, hope to put it to use here real soon. All right. We'll see you guys later. Okay. We're going to true up that center hole using the center drill and the chuck and this tool post. I've got the boring bar holder mounted on here. All right. So, let's get a little oil on there. I'm just lightly pushing into that chuck so that it pushes one fluid of the center drill over, keeps it from moving back and forth. And then we got a nice running center. Sorry about the shaky cam, guys. All right, we had some more very cool viewer appreciation mail show up this week. Go ahead and grab it and pull it over, and you guys will probably recognize it as soon as you see it. We have our very cool polo shirt that was sent to me by John Mills, also known as Double Boost on YouTube. He's, uh, he started having some uh, polo shirts made, and he had uh, contacted me and said that he wanted to make one and uh, send it to me. And uh, another interesting fact about this shirt is that he says mine was the one that you've seen in his video whenever he was showing the stitching right here, the uh, very cool Double Boost Twashard Engineering logo there with the, with the cool lathe. <laughs> 
I just love that thing, man. Looks like a little wagon, a little laid on wheels you can pull around. So, very, very nice shirt, John. I'll tell you that uh, whenever I got it inside, I, I, uh, I went ahead and tried it on and it is a little bit snug on me. The, uh, maybe the 4X over there and the, your, your side of the pond is sized a little different than, uh, than our 4X, I'm not sure. But I plan to uh, hopefully here in the near future start dropping a few of these pounds. I, I really got to start working at that. But uh, I really, this is, this is kind of, <laughs> this is going to be some more incentive to uh, get some of those pounds dropped so that I can start wearing these cool t-shirts, man. But uh, it was great, man. I, I really love it. Really nice quality shirt. So any of you guys watching, you want one of these shirts, contact John. I think he's taking orders for them. And uh, let him know you want one. And uh, let's give John a little bit, a little bit of support. So thank you very much, John. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you for sending it to me, man. Hey, Ben, this little clip's for you, man. I'm trying out your Raven's uh, all-purpose seasoning that you sent me. This is the first time I've used it here. And uh, got me some chicken going, so I, I decided to go ahead and try it on that. And just put them on. I got me some, my favorite cut of chicken, which is the wings and the legs. That's going to be a little meal for Elena and I tonight. So I'll let you know how it does, man. Can't wait to try it out. I'll put a little barbecue on there as they're getting done. It'll be some good stuff. All right, I got a couple new tool acquisitions here that I thought I'd share with you real quick. Uh, first thing is uh, I went to the flea market Sunday. Haven't really been going much. And uh, about the only good thing that I found down there was that awesome Southern breakfast that I love with eggs, grits, bacon, and sausage. <laughs> so I always go down there for the breakfast. And then I, I usually take one pass all the way around and try to find something. But I think because it's just been so hot, it hasn't really, there haven't been a lot of people down there. Uh, hopefully this fall when it starts cooling off, it's going to start ramping up again and I'm going to start going and, and uh, maybe try to find some good deals. But I did find one thing and that is this six inch rule here that I always call scale, six inch scale. And this is actually a nice one here. This is made by Peck Tools, uh, Precision it. Precision Engineering Corporation, made in USA. I've actually got a few pet tools around here, the uh, scales. But I was walking by, and uh, this one guy just had a bunch of old tools just kind of scattered out, and there were some guys looking. And I just kind of looked over and glanced to see if there was anything that caught my eye. And this thing was just laying down there in the middle of all this stuff, and I instantly knew what it was. So I reached over and grabbed it and picked it up, and I'm like, yeah, that's a that's a uh, Peck Tools six inch ruler there. So I held it up and asked the guy, I was like, what do you want for this thing? And he didn't even really know what he wanted. He was kind of like, uh, 50 cent? I was like, I'll give you 50 cent for it. So I gave him 50 cent for it and it's actually in really good shape. There's not hardly any marks on it, scratches, dings or anything. So. Another nice scale for the shop right there. So that was my one flea market find that I've, that I've had in a long time there. So I just thought I'd share that with you. Okay, we also got a couple new uh, tool acquisitions here that I'll show you. This is for the K&T mill. And I gotta thank uh, James Kilroy. He sent me the leads on these uh, eBay auctions. So you guys recognize this right here probably. This is the K&T factory made nut for the uh, for the bushing that goes on the the overarm support there so that's uh, that was a a new old stock basically a uh, nut right there factory made nut and then this is the running bushing right here for the inch and a quarter arbor i believe yep inch and a quarter arbor with the two and an eighth od and it's still in good shape it's got your typical wear marks in it but it's nice and smooth. So these were both by it now. And uh, so I bought both of them. I got the papers here. Southeastern tooling. So the, uh, the bearing nut, I paid $9.99 for free shipping. Buy it now. And the uh, 
the running bushing here, I paid $4.99 for this, and uh, then I paid $10.85 shipping and handling. So they were both from the uh, the same person. So I did he he not he didn't charge me uh, shipping on the the nut. He packaged them together. So uh, what's really cool about this is that I, I won another eBay auction, and I don't I haven't got it yet because I actually just won it yesterday. But the bronze bushing that this goes on, there was one on there on eBay for sale that uh, James had showed me, he gave me the link for it. It's the same bushing that goes in that uh, overarm support there. And I ended up winning it. And uh, so once that shows up, I'll have a brand new bushing because it's, it's new old stock, never been used. I've got a nut and I've got another running bushing now. So I'll have both of my B style overarm supports in working condition and can use both of them. So maybe there's, um, well, once I get the mill up and running, we'll be able to start doing some work on it. And uh, there may be some times when I'm doing some heavy cutting that I can utilize both of the supports on the mill. If I got maybe a big, big wide cutter in there and uh, you know, maybe we can put a support up there closer, you know, one on each side of the cutter there. So I was really happy and excited about this. And uh, I forgot to pull it down off the machine, but I was going to compare this to the one that I made. And the dimensions of this is exactly the same as that I made it. So I kind of hit it spot on. Uh, the only difference is they put six holes in it for adjusting where I, I'm sorry, they put three holes in this one where mine has six. But other than that, the dimensions are the same. Very cool, I just thought that was unique there. So anyway, that was uh, some new tools that I got this week. <coughs> and uh, probably next SNS, I'll have the, the other bushing by then and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll give you a peek at that too, okay? Well, I gotta admit, I've been a bad friend to somebody. Brought me his chair quite a few months ago and asked me what I weld it. You gotta, there's a crack in it right here. And this is his chair that he keeps out in, his, out in the shop. Everybody sits down on it whenever they're hanging out drinking beer with them. So I told them I would weld it, and it's just uh, I just keep forgetting about it, really. So he's he's a little upset with me that I haven't got his chair fixed yet, and uh, I got I got the word that he wanted this chair back immediately, unfixed or fixed. <laughs> so I figured I'd go ahead and get it in here and and uh, get it welded for him. It shouldn't be a bad job. So it is an aluminum chair. It's got a bunch of paint on it. So we'll take some of those rapid strip wheels and try to get all this paint off around it. I probably have to put a bead here. I, there's, there's a crack on the side. And on this other side of the tube, it's kind of, if I can tell where it's kind of bowed a little bit. So we may, uh, we may put a bead on the other side there too. So let's get the, uh, let's see if we can get the little buddy do job done. And, and uh, make my friend happy. All right, I'm gonna try out the Norton Blaze Rapid Strip Wheel. See if we can get some of this paint off. See the crack there now. A stinking ass mess, though, I'll tell you that. I don't know if that's the paint or what. I think it's the paint. It's going to be tough getting down in there. I don't know if I got a 
I might have to try one of my wire wheels. See if I can get down in them cracks. Okay, here, here we go. I'm going to start with this crack on this side here. I got two rods. I got a, a uh, this is a 1.8. That's probably way too big. I got this other one here. I believe this is a 16th. Got the machine set on AC. High frequency. Done got me a ball on the end of the uh, tungsten there. See if I can weld some aluminum. Oh, come on. Do very good when you touch it to the weld. That was some pretty thin stuff. It was trying to uh, blow off on the sides there as soon as I was heating it up. So I might go over it again, see if we can kind of spread it out a little bit. Okay, well, there's the first weld. Now, let me see if I can, what I want to try to do maybe is run a bead across here like a fillet weld. I think it's still a little dirty, so it may give me a problem. ain't too pretty. We'll see if we can go over it again and uh, make it look a little better. I think I'm going to clean up my tungsten. I got a little bit of aluminum on it. Okay, clean up my tungsten. See if I can make another pass across this top here. Too bad, really. Let's see if I can approve it. Oh, crap.
got to put it back in AC. See if I can get that one now. That one back there is going to be a little tricky. The crack, the little bit of crack is right up against the chair part of it. So there's no way to get behind it and, and weld from this side out. So I'll see what I can do from, uh, from this angle here, I guess. Get another rod, and uh, I don't know if you can see it there. It's not bad. I want to. I want to do the same thing. I want to. I want to run another pass over it and kind of smooth it out some. what I'll do is go ahead and put a little bit right in this area here kind of join those two wells together I think that'll work now. I think that'll hold some butts. Alright, I think we're going to let that ride. That bead right there turned out nice. Okay, Pete, you're getting your chair back, buddy. Okay, guys, I'm going to try to talk you through another job that I did here at work, building a, another trunnion mount for a hydraulic cylinder. All right, we start off in the milling machine. I got two big cold roll blocks, a flat bar that I'm milling. I'm using a three inch roughing shell mill here and working on the first block, getting it milled to shape. Made a lot of chips on this job, man. There it is. I got I got one side milled, and I'm working on the other side there. The part at the top is actually going to be turned into the trunnion. 
there's all the chips on the floor. Man, I made a pile of them on this job. They were they were stacked high. <laughs> you can see it's it's just about covered up the, the conduit cover I got right there by the mill. And the, the trash can, man, I, I had that thing filled up with the chips just from this job. There was a lot of them. So there's there's one of the halves sitting next to one of the uh, original halves to kind of give you an idea of why it's shaped like it is. You got two halves that's going to bolt together. And you can see why I mill it like that. It leaves a smaller area to turn uh, for the trunnion there. It's minimal turning in the lathe. And uh, also notice the uh, the little shoulder there, the little squared area underneath the trunnion. We'll have to face that in. Here it is back in the mill, just doing some drilling and tapping here to uh, bolt the two halves together. And I'm using a, a 3 quarter 10 uh, spiral, spiral point to tap, do some power tapping. There's the two halves bolted together, ready to uh, put in the lathe. Uh, next thing I got to do is I set it back in the vise and then I milled that center. Uh, I'm sorry, I drill a center point there. And that's for indicating in the lathe. Uh, that's the two halves bolted together, ready to go in the lathe. Uh, that this one picture is a little out of a little out of place right here. But the uh, this one here is where it's chucked up, and I I indicate that center that I drilled in there. That's to find the true center of it, and. I've already got it drilled here. I'm doing some boring, getting it bored to size, using a, a carbide boring bar there, using a CNMG insert. There it is, finished bored to size. Uh, seven inch, seven inch ID. Left a nice finish. Here we are set up, getting ready to turn the first trunnion in. There's a, there's a nice little action shot of the turning, using my turning tool, using a CNMG 431 insert. I like that shot there, man. I was spinning that sucker pretty fast. I was, I think I was running around 700 RPM turning that. I was making a finish cut there. And uh, here's another shot of doing the facing, clean, clean that side up, make it look nice. And we also had to do a little more facing. As, as I said previously, there's a, there's a bit of a shoulder there behind the trunnion that's a eighth inch long. And here it is, making my first cut, taking a 16th off, bringing it in. And there it is, finished up. As uh, both ends finished, you can see on the right side that shoulder I was talking about that I faced into it. Another finished shot there. Once I had it one side uh, turned down, I put it, I set it up between centers and used a lathe dog to, to run it. All right, here we are back in the mill doing some drilling and tapping for the tie rods. And that's a 1 inch 14 thread that I power tapped in there. And here it is finished up completely. I used a little bit of my white pig mat under, underneath it. It kind of gives it a nice shiny contrast there. Makes it look really good. But it, here it is. It's all finished up and I hit all my sizes. The trunnions are finished at 2 inch. I usually try to finish those. Uh, a few tenths under two inches or, or right at it. I, I never go over, but you want it just enough clearance for your bearings to slide on there. And uh, we've got some shots here. There's the old piece next to the new one that I made. You can see why I had to build one. The uh, One of the trunnions actually broke off. That's a common problem with these trunnions. That they'll break one of them off there. So that's about it, man. That's uh, building a trunnion. So just some more detailed finish up shots here. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. And thank you for watching. making the next S&S &S and I have a visitor. It's me. It's Friday. It is Friday. It's Fanteen. Fanteen Friday. <laughs> you got your Auburn stuff on again. I do. Custom bow. Um, belt. Uh-huh. Sweater. Shirt. So you got your diamond in. Yeah. And you got some, some eyelashes and some They're blue. They're blue. 
that matches your bow. Blue eyelashes are hard to find. Oh, I wouldn't know. I've never shot for eyelashes before. Yes, you have. No, I haven't. All right. I even changed my phone case to match. Did you get a new one? No, it's the same one, but I've been using the other one. Check out her phone case. That one has the detachable knuckles. Why you little? Why I oughta? <laughs> that see? Shing! Oh. Shing! Doubles as a weapon. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Um, you don't like my team? Shing! Oh, it's for the haters out there, huh? I've gotten a lot of hater read off your off your channel. I don't see why we all can't just get along. I'm new to this whole football thing. I know there's rivals and stuff, but can't we all just like like each other's to get as people? Uh, the guy at Publix wouldn't take my bags to the car yesterday. That's wrong. They're supposed to take your bags he out. He was a Seminoles fan. Mmm. I would complain. I did. I wrote a letter this morning. She did? Yes! She submitted a letter to the Dear Publix, Publix manager. <laughs> How rude. <laughs> okay. Right. Well, I'm going to go pick up some movies. Okay. I guess we'll watch a movie tonight then, huh? Probably not because you'll be out here maybe tomorrow. Okay. we got to make S&S &S for him. All right. I love you. Love you too. See you later. Bye.